this bag over here and possibly the laptop bag there appear to have something concealed inside them. And a concerning trend has drug syndicates targeting the elderly, fooling them into acting as unwitting drug couriers. What about the man who gave you the suitcase? You don't know his name either? No. And the only way to be really certain someone does not pose a threat is to do a bag search and make sure their travel details check out. So is this open? Yeah, I'm just going to go through your bags. Today, Officer Daniela has decided yeah, to check right, the bags of a couple who live in Melbourne. I've got a husband and wife. They arrived off the uh, Vietnam flight. Simple questions about themselves and their holiday may reveal any inconsistent details and highlight a more serious problem that needs further investigating. So was that your first trip to Vietnam? No, second. So do you, are you enjoying your retirement? Are you travel a lot? I've got, I've got a chooks. I've got a... you got chooks, yeah? Lems, what, what's this one? Your coffee? Yeah, all right. You can have that, that's fine. No, that's all right. I took it, but I never use it. <laughs> so far, everything seems OK. First impressions, lovely couple, very happy to have a chat. Just seemed like a couple that have been away on holidays and have returned happy and relaxed. So do you like what Vietnam? Yeah, it's Good right. for holiday? Yeah. Where did you go? We went to wedding. To Vietnam? And nothing happened. Oh, okay. They were going to get married. One went down there, something wrong with the paper that we were married. So the wedding never went ahead? Yeah. A friend, do you know the Travelling all the way to Vietnam for a wedding that never happened seems unusual. But it's even stranger that the would-be bride and groom has asked the couple to bring back a bag that contains nine packets of food. <coughs> well, they give us, there's no hours after giving us something. Oh, they gave you these ones? Yeah. You have to give these things to a friend. It's a sister, Wally. Oh, it's for someone else, OK. Yeah. Just going to x-ray your bags, OK? OK. Carrying any items for other people across international borders is not advised. And for this elderly Australian couple, this situation could easily end in tears, or even jail. Young South African man who's already spent three months in Australia visiting family is returning after a short trip to New Zealand. This passenger has arrived on a tourist visa. He was previously here um, on the same tourist visa. He's only departed 10 days ago and has come back into the country. He says he's back for another three month holiday. But first, officers need to clarify a number of issues. Do you have citizenship or permanent residence in any other country? Uh, no, just South Africa. Just South Africa? And have you ever been known by any other names? Um, well, I'm a dancer, but I just have a dance name. That's just a stage name. But in terms of my actual name, it's just Preston. Yeah. I don't have any other actual... Like, yeah. Okay, what's your dancer name? <laughs> uh, Crazy Kezo. What sort of dancing do you do? Uh, break dancing. Break dancing? Yeah. Okay. Do you do that professionally or? Uh, in South Africa, I just did it to like, uh, I did it professionally to like just teach kids. Officers are wondering how the man will afford his stay as they have major concerns about his lack of funds. So you said you only had $15. At cash. At okay. Cash. And how much money do you have in your bank accounts? At the moment? Yes. Uh, Probably the equivalent of about $50 or so. It's a worrying amount of money for someone who has no work rights in Australia. The reason that you've been, you know, stopped today and you've been interviewed is because you have spent um, a reasonable amount of time on shore previously, three months. And so and we just, just need wondering to, how we need to take care yeah, of ourselves. We just need to, we need to make sure that you're here for the purposes that you know you state you're here for, which are tourism purposes, because that's the type of visa that you're on, it's just a tourist visa. Officer okay. Alicia wants to run some further checks and begins with confirming his occupation. So I'm just YouTubing um, Crazy Kezo because he said that that was the name that he goes under for his break dancing. His story so far seems legitimate but new evidence has been discovered that may prevent him from entering Australia. We have found some things in his mobile phone, so I'll be asking some questions around that today. Preston, I do have to put this to you. Whilst you were in Australia last time, I'm going to ask you up front, were you working? Um, 
Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Um... Husband and wife have just arrived from Vietnam and their luggage is being x-rayed for any organic material. Based on the image, biosecurity officers believe they may be carrying foodstuffs, even though the couple has failed to declare anything. Incoming passenger card is in their language so that they do understand it. Hi there, just want to ask you some questions. Officer Gale uses a Vietnamese translation book to make sure the couple read and understood all the questions. No, 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 no. Nothing. No, no, no. Okay, I may need to look through these. As the bag search begins, okay. the officer immediately finds a mysterious parcel wrapped in plastic. This. What's this? Sit it. Because the couple's English is poor, the officer has no choice but to open the parcel and check if it's a biosecurity concern. Dishwashing liquid. Yeah. Ah, soap. OK. What's this one? Same? Yeah. Just check. See it? Soap. The mystery packages check out OK, but it doesn't take long for the officer yeah. to find yeah. food yeah. in the couple's luggage. What's this one? OK. Ah, look. I think that's roasted lotus seed. OK. This? You should have put yes. You put no. That's wrong. But that's only the beginning of the undeclared food items. <laughs> What's in this one? Fish. Fish. This is food. We need to look at food. Passenger may think it's a laughing matter, but for biosecurity officers, the situation is potentially very serious. So this friend of yours that was going to get married, he's back here now? Tomorrow, tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow he comes back. Oh, OK. So how do you know this friend? Is just a friend from Melbourne? We knew when he was baby. Oh, OK. This elderly Australian oh, got, couple may be about to learn hour. the lesson yep. of their lives. Never carry anything across the border that belongs to someone else. I've just found a bag that um, someone has asked this couple to bring into Australia. It does raise a few suspicions with me, because normally people would just carry their own items. Do you know the friend or...? Yeah, we're not. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know the person you were giving this to? Yeah, it was two girls. Oh, uh, two girls. I was girls. too scared to entice something no good, I say. I have to declare it, see? So I don't know. Oh, yeah, because it's food, yeah. Their empty bag has been taken for an x-ray to see if there is anything hidden inside. Have a look in there, that's fine. All consistent with the empty suitcase. So the bag's fine. Supervising Officer Mitch is briefed on what has been found so far. They've got all these uh, food items. Someone's left them a note for them to bring these packages back. Yeah. While the nine packets that were located are x-rayed, the couple show no sign of nervousness and appear more bewildered by the attention than worried. These could simply be exactly what the labels describe the packets to be. Authentic and delicious Korean taste. Labels one kilo, so we'll see. Feels about a kilo. And then we've got these ones that looks some sort of seafood on the front. Soup stock. But there are still a few details about this that are raising alarms. People don't usually have it packed separately with a note to give to their, to their friends. Coming out of source countries like Vietnam could be potentially a uh, concealment for narcotics. Yeah. Jetstar 735 ground. Push back and break. Whilst you were in Australia last time, I'm going to ask you up front, were you working? Uh, no. Australian Border Force Officer Alicia does not believe that this South African breakdancer, known as Crazy Kazo, was simply holidaying with family on his last visit to Australia. And she has the proof. We have um, gone through your phone and um, there are several messages here. So you've said here to your grandfather, yeah. I might stay here for another three months and do more work. And you've gone on to say, I can pay you back yeah. over the next two weeks from my new job. What do you mean by that? Uh, basically, that's just helping our family. Because uh, 
If I, let's say, help out uh, Granny Jill, like my gran at home, uh, I'd basically cut the grass for them, I'll cut the lawn, because she can't do it. And then she would just say, okay, listen, here's this $50. It's just for you to help go out for your weekend, basically. You've actually stated here, hey, John, just reminding you to talk to your mate about that Bricky's job when you see him. Yeah. So, what's that message about? That, that, okay, honestly, I tried to organise the job and nothing ever happened, nothing fell through, because I asked him, Hey, can you talk to your friend about this work? And he said, cool, I'll talk to him. And nothing actually ever happened from that. Okay. But Officer Alicia is not convinced. You know, I'm going to ask you clearly again, and be honest, have you worked in Australia when you were here last time? Um, yes, I did work, yeah. Okay, what's uh, your work? Uh, uh, basically, my uncle, like he does like a bit of gardening sometimes. So I would help him out at home and then he would kind of just give me cash for that. So any sort of work that I was in was all kind of family-based work. So yeah, that's me being honest. Under immigration law, this is still considered to be work. And Crazy Kazo now faces the possibility of his visa being cancelled. <laughs> Food. Uh, uh. This should be yes. In Sydney, uh, this couple sorry. arriving from Vietnam okay. has been caught with up, a yeah. large amount of undeclared food in their bags. This one different. Look, more fish. Fish. Yeah, uh, just fish. fish. Fish, even fresh fish is allowed as long as, it, as it's been eviscerated, which means that the stomach and the gills are not in, not in the fish. This is actually fillets of fish. But while the fish is allowed to come in, they have another item that definitely is not. What's in here? What's it made? Oh, fresh ginger. This one, not allowed. Not allowed. Yet, not allowed. This is um, fresh ginger. Yeah. And with all of this that they haven't declared, then there's those things there they haven't declared. Well, the card is in their language. Exactly. They really should be fined. Absolutely but they've got no English. A Vietnamese-speaking officer is brought in to help okay. understand the passengers' reasons for not declaring all their food. The declaration was completed by a passenger who sat next to him on the flight, OK? He, his eyesight is not very good. He normally wears two, two reading glasses over each other to actually yes, can see. I saw him and do that. Yeah, so they relied on the, the passenger who was helping him out. The translating officer explains to the couple that they won't be fine, but that it is important they fill out their own passenger cards for their next trip. They should, in the future, uh, answer yes to any of the questions uh, if they're in doubt. This retired Australian couple says they were asked by an old family friend to bring nine packets of food back from Vietnam. Your friend organised your trip, the flights and everything? Yep. Even the accommodation there? Yep. OK. The X-ray may not indicate any clear difference between the powdered food that is supposed to be in the packets or any powdered narcotic substance. It's a bit hard to tell, really. I mean, it's labelled as soup stock. It's pretty thick powdery, consistent with soup stock, but we don't really know, so we might have to open one up and just have a look and see what's inside. Officer Daniela wants to know more about the person who asked them to transport the products. Does your friend work here? Yeah, he's a truck driver. Oh, he's a truck driver, that's right. You said he was he a postman. He used to be a postman for, no, when he was younger. How many years he's a postman? But this man, your friend, is coming back tomorrow? Tomorrow, because tomorrow. We, they, we couldn't get all together. You couldn't get all together, yeah. yeah. Okay. So did you pay for your own tickets to go to Vietnam? Yeah, before. We gave him the money. You gave the friend the money? or yeah. oh, OK. Oh, he bought your ticket? Yeah. Yeah, OK. The swab test may help to clear up this whole situation or become the worst nightmare for these elderly folk. African breakdancer known as Crazy Kazo is hoping his visa will not be cancelled despite admitting he worked illegally by doing small cash-in-hand jobs for his Australian relatives. 
I was basically looking forward to coming back to Sydney, see the family, show them the photos from the family in Auckland, and just to kind of have more memories, you know, and just to kind of like spend more time. He now has a final chance to convince officers why he should be allowed to re-enter the country to visit his family. The reason why I feel my visa should not be cancelled is because I stayed true to the initial reason of my visit, which was mainly to see family. The main reason for me doing work was mainly to help my family, especially my grandfather is not always able to do certain labour work around the house. I have the type of personality where I like to sort of pay my way. I don't always expect a hand-me-down. And I saw it more as pocket money than actual sort of work for my labour. So for me, this is a very big wake-up call. And if I was granted my visa, I would just go home, see my family and hug them and take lots of photos. will consider his response and decide if Crazy Kazo should be allowed to enter into Australia or be sent home on the next available flight. Hey, if I get let through, I will do the most insane set out there of just pure happiness. <laughs> I'll do some backflip, I'll do some spins just for you guys. positive swab result for traces of the key ingredient to make methamphetamine. Officers in Sydney are becoming increasingly worried that this elderly Australian couple may have been set up as unwitting drug couriers by a family friend. So you gave him the money to pay for your trip? He organised oh, everything. Yeah. Yeah. They right seem to have been lured to Vietnam to attend a wedding that never happened and then convinced that they should bring the bag home with them. But that doesn't mean they are off the hook. OK, guys, your food packages, they've come back for traces of drugs. So we just need to open them up and just see what's inside, OK? It might be nothing, it might be a false alarm, but we just need to check, OK? I don't know, I've never done this before in my life. I don't know. Babe. Yeah, that's OK. We'll just, we'll just open it up and I'll double check. Done. I don't know. She says she's going to pick him up. That's right. I don't know. You took him. I don't know nothing, babe. I've been in Australia carrying it. Yeah, no, it's, okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. We're, we're, we're just, just going to check. Never done this before. No, no, that's all right. Okay. We, we just got to, that's our procedure. I've been in this, in, in this country for 50 years. I'm clean. I want to do that thing. Professional breakdancer Crazy Kazo is about to find out if he is going to be allowed to re-enter Australia to see his family. OK, Preston, I have taken everything into consideration, all the evidence before me, and a decision has been made today to cancel your visa. OK, so you are now being detained and you will be removed from Australia as an unlawful non-citizen. It's not the outcome he was hoping for, but he is philosophical about the decision. The way I look at it, there's probably a reason I need to go back to South Africa. Like, I, I just look in, in that sense. <laughs> I do wish you all the best. All right. He's breached his work condition of his visa, even though he didn't see it as, you know, being that big because he was working for family, cash in hand. It is considered to be work under the law, so that's what basically rules in the end. Yeah, I feel pretty gutted, I'll be honest. Um, I just didn't expect my journey to end this soon and in this sort of manner. So for me, it is a bit of a shock. Yeah, it did kind of mess my plans up a bit, but <laughs> uh, we're just going to have to just roll with the punches, hey? Hi, Grandpa Kenny. Hey, how you doing? Uh, I've got some news for you and uh, I don't think you're going to like it. Food packages have come back for traces of drugs. A retired Australian couple has just been told the bag they have brought back for a family friend has packets of food that may contain the precursor drug that is used to manufacture ice. I'll never take money. You can check me up. I know nothing bad. He said, he said, you take it. I said, go to no room. He said, I can't get a bag and put it in the bag. That's all I know. Okay. The father's coming tomorrow. He's still in there, still in Vietnam. But who are you going to give the packages to? Is His someone sister going to is about to pick it up the bag. Girlfriend. Girlfriend. The girlfriend's sister. Yeah. Okay, so the girlfriend's mm. sister is going to meet you here and collect the... the yes. Food. Okay, perfect. That's all enough. No yep. problem. Okay, thank you. 
if this so-called friend of theirs is due to return to Australia, officers will make sure they intercept him. But in the meantime, a chemical test of the contents of the food packets will be conducted to confirm that it is ephedrine. It's positive to ephedrine. I want to go home. I'm a 67-year-old woman. The couple will be taken to a private room for further questioning by investigators and be frisk searched. We're just trying to ascertain now whether they had knowledge of what was in the packages of food. A customs investigation unit will be coming and they'll conduct some interviews with the passengers to help in that matter. So we're just going to have a tape conversation now, guys, okay?